Oh, so he's going to punch her. That's not reckless or stupid. He began to slow move it back and forth in a soothing fashion. Oh, he's treating her like a cat. Never mind. Annalise gave a low sigh before closing her eyes, her mouth twitching reluctantly into a minute grin. That small sign from Annalise brought a smile to Alistair's face. He kept stroking her head, gentle motions that brought relaxation. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Oh, seriously, he kept stroking her head, gentle motions that brought relaxation. Oh, he is just really bad at wording. It's like, if you're keeping home, track at home, that's like, what, number 59? Yeah. After a minute or, or so of silence, Annalise lifted her head. What are you doing, Alistair? Just seeing how you're coping, said Alistair, stroking her clammy cheek with his fingers. Annalise ex exhaled, her cheeks flapping slightly as air passed through her mouth. That would be ew. Is there anything I can do? Alistair broke off, his voice trailing away as Annalise's head shook slowly. Maybe there is something I can do. Clearly that's what the no gesture means. Alistair stood up slowly, lingering next to Annalise's head for a sign of reaction. Annalise's head eyes stared at the opposite wall, a stare that didn't pay attention to the outside world, or Alistair, which was the real problem. So Alistair cupped her cheek. Her eyes shifted to his face. I have an idea. What is it? Don't think about it. Just something that may help if everything goes as planned. Then why bother telling me about it if you're not going to tell me about it? Alistair walked over to the window, crouched on the edge, and decided to completely ignore Annalise's question. He leapt out. His wings sprang out and caught an updraft. Flapping to gain altitude, Alistair shifted his weight and flew parallel to the hill, which was never before mentioned and never will be again. Five minutes later, Alistair came to a standstill at his next stop, the roof of another house. Clamping his stone hand onto the edge of the roof, Alistair swung down and hung next to the bedroom window. He stole a look inside. Emmeline, who we've never heard of before, sat at a desk with her back to him. It looked like she was writing something. Alistair didn't pause to investigate, though. He had other stops before he could rest peacefully. Placing his feet on the brick wall, he kicked off and rose in the air once again. Good thing that magnet spell finally wore off, right? Alistair dived down to a gentle glide into the yard of Chelsea's house, who we have met before. Through the back window, Chelsea was chatting with her mother. Alistair smiled as laughter emanated from the kitchen. He stayed long enough to catch a glimpse of Chelsea, smiling before turning around. Sprinting the length of the yard, Alistair leapt himself into the air. He rose higher, flying to the farthest house from his own. He came to rest in a huge pine. This was as far as he could get without being directly under the street lamp. The house across the way was home to another girl he cared about. Despite the distance, Alistair could pick up people in the house. Alexa, who we've never met before either, was sitting in the living room with her family, watching a movie. But they weren't alone. Alistair summarized that the handsome youth sitting next to Alexa was Craig. Perfect! As Alistair watched, Craig put an armor on Alexa's shoulder. Oh, oh, he's going there. Alexa sat closer as a result. Oh, she's into it. Alistair's emotional barriers were pushed to the limit. His hands gripped the bark tighter now. His muscles flexed intensely, the mineral hand glowing white hot. Then Alistair's anger broke. It's like the first sign of pregnancy, right? There were several loud cracking noises and the sound of glass shattering. Alistair's anger vanished as surprise made an astonishment visit. I like to make astonishment visits from time to time. What did I do? Looking down, he saw, sev saw that several large branches had snapped crudely down the tree. One branch, as thick as a 2x4, had been slammed into a nearby parked car. A nearby parked car, shattering the windshield. Alistair looked back, horrified. Everyone in the house was looking outside, as were the occupants in the neighboring settlements. Now you've done it. If the council knew what you just did, you'd be sent off the desolation with barely a month's rations. Alistair twisted around and kicked off flying quickly away before anyone could catch sight of him. He flew low over the trees, trying to find a wind current leading back home. He eventually caught one, heading east and spotted his house down below. Alistair tucked in his wings tight and dropped. The thrill of the fall was contagious. I don't know who else is catching it. I know I am, but, you know, that's just me. The sense, the sense of loose freedom, plus the popping of his ears, was always an interesting sensation. And here's a fun side note for all the children at home. If you drop an altitude fast enough, the pressure in your ears will become so great to the pr pressure outside your ears that your eardrums will eventually rupture and you will bleed out through the ears. Alistair snapped his wings and landed with hardly a sound. Closing his wings part way, he walked to the back door and slid it open. He walked through the kitchen, into the living room, and headed downstairs. He lives in the basement. <laughs> 
He headed to the bathroom and washed his face in hot water, contemplating what had transpired. I only went there to see if she was okay, if she was safe. How was I supposed to know that Craig was there? I lost my temper. I haven't lost my temper since I was at the Academy. Alistair wiped his face, drying off the sweat that mingled with the water. He sat down on his bed, his wings folded down over his shoulders like two feathery panchos. See, that's just too soon after Mike died. Bad taste. After befuddling thoughts swirled through his mind for a few moments more, he began, he began to clear his mind so he could fall asleep. But he couldn't do it. The sight of Craig and Alexa sitting together, wedged in his head. Heartache filled him, sapping his morale. Without even undressing, Alistair curled into a ball, wrapping his wings around him like a, coco like a cocoon. Tears streaming down his face, he cried himself to sleep. End of chapter 9!